Thank you for coming out to worship with us today. Like I said, it is the Lord's Day. That was part of our God's House worship band. Would you give them a, a hand, please? And as Brother Mark Breedlove has already said, we extend an invitation to you to come join and worship with us if you do not have a church family. We are God's house, and we became called that just through spiritual evolution, I guess it is. And we are uh, historically West Philadelphia Baptist Church, but God's house is a house of worship for all people. And so we worship there every Sunday morning in this fashion, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. But it's good to have you here today. I'll share... Uh, the Word of God with you that God has put on my heart. I'm honored to be here at this historic place, the Neshoba County Fairgrounds, and I'm, I am honored to be here. I'm touched that I was invited to come and share the Word of the Lord with you for a few moments. Uh, if some of you I see have your Bibles with you, if you do, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, and let's see what the Word of the Lord has for us today. I would like to talk to you for a few moments about facing the future without fear. You know that in our generation in 2010, our future is dominated by fear. If you want to get depressed and stay that way, turn the news on. It doesn't really matter which news channel you turn on, which one you prefer. But if you would like to get depressed beyond hope and uh, beyond medical care, just cut the news on. It's something new and worse and bad every day. Some tragedy, some catastrophe, or some new politician making some real genius move to further ruin our country. All right? So can I get an amen from some Americans tonight, today? All right, the Bible says that the path of the just... The path of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. In other words, God has got good plans for you and I. He has plans for us here as Christian Americans to be and do everything that He wants us to be and do. Well, the problem is, okay, God's got plans. The problem is getting those plans down here in 2010 to where we can be. Okay, and where we can do what God wants us to do. God does have a path for us, but Proverbs 29 also says, on over in the part of Proverbs, it says, with no vision the people perish. The word perish means to have no direction and to have no discipline in your life. Now, if you have no discipline and if you have no direction, then you don't have no idea where you're going. We got any coon hunters in the house? Anybody coon hunt? Anybody deer hunt? All right, anybody ever go out in the woods? Come on, work with me. Anybody go out in the woods, all right? Okay? They just told me to be myself today, so I'm going to do my best, all right? Me and a friend of mine was coon hunting. His name is Ricky Smith, but don't tell too many people I know him if you know him, all right? You'll know why I said that. We went coon hunting. We got the coon, we got the dogs, we're heading in, and I said, Ricky, we're walking the wrong way. God put inside of me a compass. I can just feel it when I'm going the wrong way. It's in the middle of the night. I said, we're going the wrong way. And if you know Ricky, he's as hard-headed as concrete, all right? If he was here today, and this is being taped so he can hear it, I love you, Ricky. But you know what? If you take your compass and you hold it by the metal gun barrel, it won't work properly, all right? <laughs> Three and a half hours later, going the wrong direction, we finally get back to the truck, which was only about 15 minutes away. Now, if you're going to get someplace, just because you're moving does not mean that you will get there. Right. Let me say it again. Some of you didn't hear me. If you're going to go someplace, you've got to have a destination in mind. And if you're going to get there, just because you're moving, sweating, and active does not mean that you're going to get there. All right? Now, if you want to go to New York City today, you're going to have to get a GPS, an airplane ticket to go. You can walk around these fairgrounds till you wear yourself thin. You can sweat, you can fan, but if you go round and round, you will not get to Manhattan. You will not get to New York. You've got to get in the direction that God wants you to go in. Now, God has plans for every one of you that are here today. Now, the problem we have about tomorrow is yesterday is killing our tomorrow. We have traded our past for our future, or we've traded our future for our past because we're so afraid of what happened yesterday is going to happen again tomorrow. Since we failed yesterday, we make the mistake of assuming that we're going to fail tomorrow. Since the neighbor's kids went bad, we are assuming our kids are going to... Can y'all help me today? Can y'all talk to me a little bit today? We're assuming since yesterday was messed up, then tomorrow is going to be messed up. So fear... Fear. Does anybody in the house understand fear? Any fears in the house? All right. Any? Uh, let me break it down so some of you can understand what I'm saying. Any financial fears in the house? How many of you lost all your money two years ago when it went like this? 
I know you don't want to raise your hand because you're ashamed of the fact that you did and you're fearful in here. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you don't have no idea what course this country is taking. It's in a, going in a bad direction. But let me tell you, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 in verse 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but it has, He has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. All right. So 2010, fear has nothing to do with it. Now, uh, you see the video cameras. This will be aired around the world via the, the Internet later sometime this week, and we'd like to welcome. Would you welcome our Internet audience? Would you give them a hand clap today? And they will be watching around the world in Miami and motels and in India and in Los Angeles and all kind of places we get letters from. And we want you to know from the Shelby County, Mississippi, that Jesus loves you and He cares about you, all right? And no matter where you're at today, got a letter from India last week, a, a group of pastors that get pastor 25 churches over there. Uh, the lead pastors got typhoid, I believe. Is that the way you say that, Dr. Boyette? Typhoid. And so there are people today around the world that will be watching this that we need to pray for, that they have fears that they deal with that you and I don't have a clue about. We don't understand the kind of fears they deal with. The biggest fear we got is trying to raise our kids and trying to pay our light bill. But let me tell you today, the Bible says that heaviness in Proverbs 25, heaviness in the heart of the man will make it stoop down, but a good word will make it glad. All right? God did not give us a spirit of fear. Greater is He, 1 John 4, 4, that's in you than He that's in this world system. So it doesn't matter who's in the outhouse or the White House. God's still in control. He's still on the throne. Nothing has changed. He is still going to take care of His people. He is God. I have a friend of mine that used to work for me. I won't call his real name, but we called him Wild Man. Wild Man was just born wild. He had his eyes. Brother Wayne would tell you the story. You looked in his eyes. You know them kind of people, you look in their eyes and their eyes tell you everything you need to know. His eyes was always dancing around like he, something was after him. Now, some of you that came out of the 60s and 70s, he eat a lot of mushrooms, not the kind you buy you know, at, at Walmart back in the 60s and 70s. That may have had some impact. I'm not sure. But anyway... He asked me, he said, you know, have you ever felt something was looking at you? And I said, well, you know, wild man, not much lately. Back in the 70s now when I, you know, was down here, you know, when it wasn't so light out here at night. Some of you 70s teenagers, you know, what we did down here in the 70s. Hey, I wasn't preaching down here then, baby. There wasn't no lights out here. You know how the younger generation's eyes all lit up. It was, the only light you could see was a little piece of fire on the end of a stick standing around out here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, come on. Don't get holy on me today, okay? Jesus Christ is the Savior of sinners, and I was a sinner. Now, I know I was a sinner. Now, some of you, I can tell by the look in your eye, you ain't realized it yet, honey, but you are. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so wild man said, you know how it is when you feel like something's looking at you? I said, well, what you talking about? He said, I went swimming down in Louisiana. If you're going to go swimming, Louisiana's not the state to do it in, okay? That's Florida. I think maybe he took a right when he took a, was going south and took a right and went west and should have took a left went east anyway. And so he said, I was floating around out in one of these bayous and I felt something looking at me. And he said, I opened my eye and there was a big eye right here. I said, what was it, wild man? He said, it was alligator. I said, what did you do, wild man? What? He said, well, here's what I did. I just moved my two pinkies. He said, it took me a while, but I had a plan in mind. Get to the shore. He didn't go round and round in circles. Necessity is the mother of creativity, okay? You know you're not where you want to be. You know that fear is looking at you, breathing down your neck. So make a plan. Plan your work. Work your plan. God's got a plan for you in His life, uh, for you in your life, and He's going to work that plan, get hooked up with that plan. Don't get off the plan. Stay on the plan. And don't matter what's breathing down your neck, God will work a plan in your life, and He will bless you. While I'm on the 70s, i got to tell this on my mama. God bless her. She's dead and gone. Love Jesus. Back in the 70s, she's a Baptist woman. And uh, I guess she got, you know, kind of wanting to be like the Pentecost ladies without going to the Pentecost church. And I love all Baptists, all Pentecost, because that's why we call our church God's house. We've got all, we're kind of like the Baskin Robbins church. We've got Catholics, Assembly of Gods, Pentecostals, Baptists. And somebody asked me last night, said, how do you do that? 
I said, do what? They said, well, you, do you preach for Catholics one Sunday? And no, I just preach Jesus every Sunday, all right? And so my mama, back in the 70s, she wanted to look like a Pentecost, and she didn't want to go to Pentecost church, so she got her one of them wigs and put it on top of her head. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, some of y'all still got y'all's in your closet. I see it in your eyes. Because your husband did this, because every time he goes in looking for something, a pair of socks, it falls down and scares him. He thinks something done bit him, all right? And so she took that hair piece and she set it up on that bed post. Y'all remember them old big beds, big round beds? She sat on that bed post. And I was a scared child. I mean, I wasn't scared. I was scared. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I slept with my mom and daddy till they run me off, okay? I ain't shamed. I'm just telling you what was going on. I'd lay in there between mom and daddy and I'd go to sleep. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night, daddy here, mama here, and I'd see that wig sitting up on that bed post. I thought somebody up in that room after me. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? You ever felt like something after you? Do you feel like something after you today? Do you feel like that the economy downturned? Do you feel like the pressures of life, the stress of life is eating your guts out? Well, it is. It's a medical fact that stress takes magnesium out of your system. You know what happens when you get magnesium out of your system? Your blood sugar goes down. Your blood pressure goes down. Your serotonin goes down. And then what happens to you? You get, you get depressed. You ball up in a fetal position on the couch and you just take medication and hope the world just goes on by and leaves you. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is your hope. He is your peace. He is your power. And I promise you today, right here from the Neshoba County Fairgrounds, it doesn't matter where you are around the world, He is not bound by geography. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to do good stuff in your life. If you want something different, focus right here, class. If you want something different in your life tomorrow, you're going to have to do something different today than you did yesterday. Okay? Definition of insanity, keep doing the same thing, you keep getting the same results. I had a phone call yesterday. I was sitting up at the cabin, and Miss Jan, my cousin, was cooking biscuits, and Martha was frying bacon, and Deborah was cooking eggs, and man, I was so hungry, and they didn't get it done about lunch, and I was sitting there just waiting. I got down there at 10.30. They told me to be ready at 10.30. I just sat there like a little bird on a limb waiting for Mama to drop a worm in his mouth. Well, my cell phone rang. Anybody got a cell phone in the house? Anybody got any cell phones? My cell phone rang. I didn't know the number. I got 4,200 contacts in my iPhone, and I couldn't, I, it wasn't in there. And I said, my God, who could this be? Well, some lady had the wrong number, gave me a pretty good cuss, and she thought I was her husband, and I hadn't showed up back home last night. And so I just hung up on her, okay? <clears throat> well, she called back, didn't she, Martha? She called back. I tried to explain to her that this was the wrong number. I know you upset. I ain't your husband. I can't help because he's out with your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing too mean. All right? Well, she called me back a third time. Definition of insanity. I said, ma'am, if you dial my number again, you're going to keep getting me. You're going to have to dial somebody else's number to get somebody else. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? If you want your life to be different tomorrow than it is today, you're going to have to do something different today than you did yesterday. How many wants your life to be better tomorrow than it was yesterday? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The can-do people, say this with me, I am, I am a can-do can follower, follower of Jesus. Of Jesus. All right, give Jesus a hand clap of praise if you would. Are you having fun at the fair? Are you enjoying yourself? Enjoying? Keep it straight. Enjoy. You know, there are going to be things you see that bother you. Obviously, you're at church today. There are going to be things that people do that upset you. But you know what? Everybody's got to make their own choices. They've got to live with their own consequences. I want to encourage you as families, do not allow the darkness to smother out such a good family thing that we have. Let's rise up and be everything that we're supposed to be and do everything we're supposed to do. Now, we the church can go hide in a hole someplace. Let the darkness take it over. But as long as we burn our candle and shine our light... We are God's people. We're on God's planet. We're headed in God's path. And we're walking in God's power. And everything's going to be okay. All right? Give Jesus a hand clap of praise if you would. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to invite everybody that's watching around the world to know Jesus. Because there are people that will... We will get emails next week when Moonbeam posts this on attending God's house is our Facebook page. Her... Facebook page is Moonbeam Media Ministries and she graciously films for us every Sunday and we got uh, www.godshouse.mobi, scottboatner.com, several venues of broadcast and there are people that will be watching this that need Jesus so would it be okay with y'all 
Could we lead them in a prayer to accept Jesus as their Savior around the world? Would that be good with y'all? Yeah. All right, I want y'all to pray with me. I want you to pray out loud even though you may be saved. Pray this sinner's prayer with me so to give them strength, uh, you know, to talk to Jesus. Can y'all can y'all help me with that? And then we're going to be dismissed, all right? Can we do that? I tell you what let's do. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. There may be someone here. You know, Mark, there may be someone here, Miranda, that needs Jesus today. They don't have to be in India or Los Angeles or Australia or Miami. There may be someone here that has never prayed this sinner's prayer that I'm about to lead you in. And so with every head bowed and with every eye closed, I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer. And we're going to lead our church around the world, our webcast church around the world in prayer and tell them about Jesus. Are y'all ready? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a sinner. And I'm coming to you by faith, repenting of my personal sin. And I accept your Savior, your Son, my sacrifice for my sins. In Jesus' name, right now, by faith, By faith, I am saved. I am saved. Everybody say amen. amen. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed. Now, if you're here today, I want you to stand up all over this great pavilion. Would you get up on your feet? Everybody get up on your feet. If you're here today, and today was the first time you prayed that prayer, today was the first time that you'd ever talked to God in a serious way, that you realized that your future don't look too good, and that you need the hope of Jesus Christ in that future. And you prayed that prayer with us in sincerity. You know what happened to you? You just met Jesus Christ, okay? He just moved all up in your life, all right? He just took over your life. And I promise you, He can handle life a lot better for you than you can handle for yourself. Now, with every head bowed, every eye closed. And they just told me to be myself and do my thing. Don't try to be somebody else. And so... If you're here today, and today was the first time that you prayed that prayer, today was the first time that you called on Jesus and you asked Him into your life to be your Savior, the Bible says that salvation comes by faith. And you around the world, if you called on Jesus today, send us an email. We would love to correspond with you and help you understand the Word of God and understand what just happened to you when you prayed that prayer. But if you're here today, and you call on Jesus to be your Savior, I would love for you just to ease out. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. I would love for you just to ease out of your pew where you're at and come down. Or either raise your hand. If you're not comfortable doing that, that's fine. God is not a boundary kind of guy. He can go any place. So if you're here today and you do, let's, let's just start off easy. If you're here and you said that prayer today for your first time and you just want to slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I asked Jesus to be my Savior today. And you don't, want, you don't feel comfortable coming down. That's fine. You just come to me later or call me or text me or email me. There's communication means on our websites and, of course, on Facebook. Uh, Scott L. Boatner on Facebook. If you're here today, just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer today and I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And around the world, would you let us hear from you if you accepted Jesus? Now, if you're here today, I want to pray for you before we dismiss. We have another church service to do at 11 o'clock on Gum Street in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia. If you're here today and you need some help today, I don't have to know what that help is. I don't have to know. Maybe you need some family help, some marital help, some wisdom, some physical help. Maybe you got some sicknesses you're dealing with, some grandkids you're worried about, some babies you're concerned with. Maybe you just need God to just step down and just make you feel better mentally. You've been dealing with some depression and some anxiety. If you're here today, every head's bowed, every eye closed. And we've kind of just put these imaginary blinders on and nobody else is here but me, you, and Jesus. Say, so, preacher, would you pray for me? I won't call your name. Let me, let me tell you, I know I'm very interactive and very theatrical, but I will not call your name. I will not point you out. I will not come to you. I will not embarrass you. You stay where you're at. Nobody will bother you. Just slip your hand up. Say, preacher, would you pray for me today? Would you slip your hand up? Are there anybody in this house? Thank you. The hand's up going every place. Come on, put them up. We're fixing to pray and dismiss. Thank you. Their hand's going up all over the building. Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for each person that's raised their hand here today. They need a touch from Jesus Christ. Lord, I do not know what they need, but God, you know what they need. 
And so God, touch them and grant their request today because we pray in the name of Jesus. And so I, as the man of God, for this moment in time in history, this 25th day of July, 2010, standing in the pavilion of the Shelby County Fairgrounds, we declare the blessing of God upon those that are here today and especially so on those that have raised their hand. We prophesy good into your life. Job 22, 21, the Bible says that if we get acquainted with God, good will come to us. So I encourage you to get acquainted with Him. And those that are watching around the world, I encourage you to read your word and get acquainted with God. Job 22, 21 says that if you get acquainted with Him, then good things will happen to you. Now, Father, we thank you. We speak a blessing on this great place that we live. We speak a blessing on our nation and the nations around the world. And we receive your goodness today. And we bless your holy name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Did y'all enjoy being at church today? Amen. All right. Thank you for being here today. Shake somebody's hand. Hug somebody's neck. If you want another church service, go to West Philadelphia. We'll be there at 11 o'clock and we'll do it again. We love you and thank you. God bless you. Now, you can beat people with the Bible. You can put it on them, but it won't change their life until you put it in them. All right? Ecclesiastes says if you walk alone, fall in the ditch, who's going to pull you out? <clears throat> so it's good to have friends. There's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Proverbs says iron sharpens iron. There's tons of reasons why you need to come to church and get you a friend, get somebody to talk to.